Good morning. Welcome to Church Online. I'm so glad that you've chosen to spend your Sunday here with us at Station Church. Let's worship together this morning. Let's worship the Lord together. He's so great. Let's give him glory. See? 
you are just joining us this morning, welcome. If you're new to Station Church, we would love an opportunity to connect with you. Please take a moment and fill out our digital connect card. You can find that pinned uh, in the comments below this video, or you can visit our website at www.station.church forward slash I'm new. And now for the announcement that many of you have been waiting for. We are coming home to Station Church. Sunday, July 5th, we'll be having our first in-person worship experience. And you'll notice many changes that we've made throughout our building uh, with your safety in mind. We've installed touchless hand sanitizer stations. We've installed new signage as, as a reminder of social distancing protocols. And we've rearranged our sanctuary so that you can safely participate in our Sunday experience. Uh, be sure to arrive a few minutes early so that we can get you checked into service and safely seated. Uh, and for all of you families, we have some exciting news for you too. Uh, Station Kids will be open and ready to welcome kids with a fun, safe environment built just for them. We're so excited to see you and, and be with you in person. And so we need you to stay tuned on our Station Church Facebook page for more information uh, about our coming home Sunday. And there we'll have tips for you about how you can uh, help us keep our Sunday experience a safe and healthy environment for everyone who attends. Two weeks ago, we took an offering for Project Rescue to help women who have been freed by their traffickers start a new life. And Project Rescue has already started and women are receiving vocational training. And here at Station Church, we gave just over $3,000 to this project. Now, that is the equivalent of two women and their children freed from sexual slavery. And we're just a small part of a massive work of God. Churches all over the country gave to, to this project and thousands of women and their children have been set free. Thank you uh, for your generosity and for your obedience. And I want to remind you this morning that blessing follows obedience. I want to pray for you. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, that as a, as a church body, God, that you have um, really turned our hearts towards not just giving back to you, but God, giving out of a generous heart, a generous spirit, God, and, and um, being committed to making sure that the gospel, that your message of hope and salvation goes forth uh, to the ends of the earth. And so, Father, as we give this morning, Father, I pray that you return that obedience with blessing, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're giving this morning, you can give online at www.station.church forward slash give. Here's Pastor Joel with this morning's message. Hey, good morning, Station Church. So excited to be with you this morning. Have you ever felt completely and totally overwhelmed? One thing going wrong generally doesn't make you feel that way. But when things start stacking up, it can be overwhelming. A lot of you have felt that way in the last few months. I know I have. There has been so much to deal with and to process. It seems like everywhere you turn, there are problems everywhere. You wonder what to do or where to turn. You might even wonder, you know, where is God in all of this? It's overwhelming when you don't have any answers. You wonder if things will ever go back to normal again. You don't know what to do or where to turn or you don't even see hope sometimes. But today we're going to look at an amazing story in the Bible, one that even if you haven't spent much time in church, you probably heard about it. It's a story where God's people were deep into trouble and they were overwhelmed. They had trouble on every side. The book of Exodus is about God's people, the Israelites, who were uh, captive. They were slaves in Egypt for over 400 years. Captivity was all that they knew. It all changed when God spoke to Moses and instructed him to lead the Israelites out of slavery into the promised land. Moses went to Pharaoh and he said this in Exodus 5.1, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go. But Pharaoh had no interest in releasing the slaves. 
in response to Pharaoh uh, saying no, God sends a series of plagues on the land of Egypt. And finally, Pharaoh relents and allows the Israelites to leave. It must have been a great day for the Israelites because they were finally free. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Now they had been captive for years. Now they were finally free from Egypt and God decides to send them the long way. I wonder if they knew they were missing the shortcut. Can you imagine? It's like, hey, I thought we were going to the promised land. Isn't it that way? After all the time in Egypt, why in the world are we taking the long way to the promised land? Verse 18. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. God's route to the promised land not only was the long cut, it led through the wilderness, the desert. There's nothing worse than going the long road trip. Let's watch this video. You guys, today's the day. We're going to Disney. Yay! Yay! You did get all their activities, right? For the car ride? Yeah, they have a lot. You guys, are you so excited? I know it's gonna be a long drive, but it's totally gonna be worth it. Mom, I'm so bored. What? Quit looking at me. I'll look at you if I want to. You guys, we're going to Disney. Stop complaining, it's gonna be worth it. Mom, are we there yet? Uh, this is the worst vacation with all this driving. Mom, I have literally read all of these books. Are we there yet? Where is Disney? I don't know see Mickey Mouse. It's been like 14 days. When is this ever going to be over? Mom, I want to go, I want to go home. The road to freedom was long, hot, and difficult, but it was still God's road. You've been taught to believe hard times mean you aren't in God's will or even following God's direction. But God still leads in the wilderness. Sometimes God actually leads you to the wilderness. Exodus 13, 21, By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel both night and day. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of its people. That's better than Google Maps, isn't it? It might have been the long way, but there was no doubt it was God's way. All they had to do was follow the cloud in the day and the fire by night. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back. Now, I would have stopped Moses right there and said, you know what? Wait a second. What are you saying? Are you crazy? God wants us to turn around, to turn back. We don't need to turn back. We need to get as far away from the Egyptians as possible. Turning back is completely the wrong idea. And it goes on. In camp near Piharoth, between Migdal and the sea, they are to encamp by the sea directly opposed Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. What looked and seemed random and illogical was all part of God's plan. God said, when this is over, everyone, everyone will know that I am stronger, that I am in control. Everyone will know that God is greater than any army. When you are under attack or overwhelmed, you just want it to be over. 
But God will use the attack to demonstrate his power to you and to those who are watching you. Some of you have been praying for your spouse for years. Stay faithful in that hard times. Yes, it may be hard, but God will use that to win the victory. It's a powerful thought. If there's not an attack, there can't be a victory. But Pastor Joel, I don't like attacks, and guess what? Neither do I. But I do like victories. Let's sing this song. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Sing it with us. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were uh, the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified. And I understand fear. They were marching across the desert and finally on their way to freedom and suddenly they heard a sound and turned around to see the most powerful army in the entire world chasing after them. You would be afraid too. On one side of them was the wall of the Red Sea and on the other side of them was a mighty army. There was no way out and no hope. In that moment, they were completely overwhelmed. They were terrified. Terrified and I it says that they cried out to the Lord, and the Bible doesn't tell us what, what they said. What did they, what did they yell? What did they scream? I can imagine that they just screamed for help. 
Lord, save us. When you're overwhelmed by circumstances, attacked by people or by Satan, your initial response is predictable. You're afraid because you don't know what will happen. You don't know if you can win. You look at the circumstances and then it seems bigger than you, mostly because, guess what? Your circumstances are bigger than you. Fear is the normal, natural human reaction. The Israelites, they were terrified. They cried out to God. Then the Israelites made the mistake that so many of us make. They should have stopped right there and prayed and kept praying until the fear was gone and they sensed the peace and direction of the Lord. Instead, in verse 11, they say this to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us to Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the desert. This is one of the most amazing examples of stupidity in the entire Bible. Look at what they said. They said, what have you done bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say, leave us alone? We we like being slaves. They didn't say that. They were elided to leave captivity in Egypt. Moses was the man. He was the hero. Now that the enemy was chasing them, Moses was no longer the hero. He was just the idiot who made them leave their wonderful lives of slavery. If you were a leader, you could identify with this. When troubles come, people forget great leadership moments and victories of the past. They revise history in a hurry. All of your great moments and wonderful leaderships and big wins are forgotten. When addicted people go through rehab, they come out with some hope and direction and they listen to your guidance and they follow direction. They trust those who have led them out of their wilderness. But I've seen it happen so many times at the very first sign of trouble or a short relapse or a legal problem from their past, they turn on the very people who have helped them and guided them on their road to recovery. They tell their sponsor or their pastor, you know what, I was better off before you made me go to rehab. My life was good, but now, now look at it. They've forgotten how miserable their lives were before and how they were in bondage to their addiction. When you are overwhelmed and afraid, you attack others. You take it out on your friends, your family, on your spouse, on the people that you love most. I've learned when people are in attack mode, there's usually a reason. They're dealing with hurt or pain or fear and don't know how to handle it correctly. And here's the fact, hurting people hurt people. Look again what the Israelites said. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Come on. It was God who brought them out of Egypt, not Moses. When you are under attack and overwhelmed, you forget God's power. You focus on your fear, your enemy, um, your impossible circumstances and situations instead of focusing on God. Moses answers the people and he says, you know what, you idiots, you're blaming me, you've forgotten God. You people deserve to die in the desert and be slaves for the rest of your lives. I'm out of here. I'm sure that's probably what Moses wanted to say, but he didn't say that. Instead, He said this, do not be afraid. Fear comes when you look at your circumstances instead of God and his promises. It's true. It looked like they were going to be trapped, but they had direct visible signs that God was still with them. They had a cloud by day and fire by night. I wonder if they had become too accustomed to God's presence, that they forgot its significance. We wouldn't do that, would we, church? 
When coronavirus struck, we found out that we couldn't be together anymore on Sundays. For months, we weren't together. And all of a sudden, people found out how much church really meant to them. They can't wait to be back home. People all around the world lost their ability to be together, and suddenly they realize how important it was to them. Soon we can be together, and I pray, God, don't let us go back to the way we used to be when sports and sleep mattered more than being in your presence. Help us not to return to misplaced priorities and uh, the casual ignoring of your presence. God said, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The enemy you see today, you will not see tomorrow. You may still have to fight the battles, but you'll never fight this battle again. I will completely and totally deliver you. What a great life approach. Do what God says and watch what God does. Now here's the promise. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Now the word used for still means to be silent, to cease talking. The Israelites have been whining and complaining. And God, through Moses, said, you know what? Zip it. I've heard enough. I'm tired of listening to you. Shut your mouths. Stop with your worrying and complaining. If you'll quit talking, I'll start working. Be calm. Be still. There is no reason to go back to Egypt. The battle is my battle, not yours. Moses said what every leader dreams of saying. And when people are complaining and griping and arguing over things that aren't eternal, I want to say, in the name of Jesus, stop it. Just stop it. Why would you let your division, hurtful, sinful words stop God's power? Shut up. Let God work. He's ready. The Lord will fight for you if you just be still. But be still is just half the promise. The other half is when you are still, God will fight the battle. So settle yourself. Quit trying to handle every situation. Be quiet. Get still before the Lord. You don't have to fight. God will fight the battle for you. Let's sing this song together. to be still.
to be still teach me to lay down i give up all my strength and lay my armor on the ground show me how to rest on the altar of your will i know that you are god but teach me to be Moses made his speech. Then God responded. If you feel overwhelmed, if circumstances are stacked against you, if you are under attack, if Satan has targeted you, guess what? I've got good news. You're going to love it. There was an army behind them and a huge sea in front of them. There was no way out. But in verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? In other words, is there a problem, guys? What's up? What are you talking about? Now, God is not uncaring or unfeeling. That's not what this is about. Instead, here's the truth revealed. God is not intimidated by your circumstances. He's not intimidated by your attackers or the enemy. God looks at them and yawns and he says, you know what? What attack? You mean that? That's nothing. So God continue, tell the Israelites to move on. God said, I told you which route to take. I'm leading you on. Ignore them and keep going. That's what God would say to you today. Keep going. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Don't give up. Don't quit. You've come too far to give up now. Keep going. When circumstances seem to be overwhelming when people are against you and Satan is attacking, don't quit. Keep moving forward. Follow the very last word that you've heard from the Lord. And guess what? Obey it. I cringe when people say I'm going through something and I need to stop in ministry or uh, we haven't been to church as much because we have some hard times. You know, a pandemic isn't the time to step out of ministry. Coronavirus did not rescind God's assignment to you. I know you're facing down the effects of isolation and fear of sickness, but this is the worst time to quit on God. This is when you need to be in ministry. This is when you need to connect with your church family. This is when you need to go to church. This is when you need to tithe. When times get tough, Keep going. Satan wants you to quit. He wants you to throw in the towel because when you quit, you lose. No matter what, do not give up. We've had a challenging year as Station Church. We've faced a huge challenge and adversity. We as a church went through a fire, a pandemic. And we're not going to quit. We are not going to give up because God is faithful. So God says, tell the Israelites to move on. Verse 16, raise your staff and stretch your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all of his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, and I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. The Israelites didn't see any option of victory or escape, right? They had the sea on one side and the army on the other side. God had a different plan. God, who after all, created the seas, told Moses, watch this, check this out. My plan is so amazing that no one will say, you know what, they just got lucky. No one will call this a fluke. I am God and I will deliver you. Stretch out your hand and I will make a way through the sea. Do you feel like there is no way out? God says to your situation, Watch this. I've got the answer that the doctors don't have. I created your body and I can heal you. God says, watch this. I've got the answers to your marriage. I designed marriage and I can restore it. 
He says, watch this. I've got the answers for your children. I gave you those kids and I will bring them back to you. No answer for finances? Watch this. Nothing is too difficult for me. I have already defeated Satan. His power is no match for my power. Watch this. I will provide for you and provide a way out. God would say this to you today. You may think you're surrounded, but there's no such thing as surrounded with God. I am God. I surround everything. Those enemies that surround you, I've got them surrounded. You feel overwhelmed, but I'm about to turn things around. Watch this. God takes the impossible and he makes it possible. That's God's history. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on their left. For centuries, uh, commentators have tried to come up with a natural reason for this miracle. Right? Maybe it was a cyclone or a tornado, an earthquake. Maybe there was some type of volcanic eruption. I've seen arguments that it wasn't really a sea. Maybe it was a swamp. Those arguments make what happened next even more miraculous. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots fall off so that they had difficulty driving. And even the Egyptians said, let's get away from these Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them. The Egyptians knew what was happening. The Lord was fighting for Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and the chariots and the horsemen. Moses stretches out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians laying dead on the shore. The deliverance of God was complete and spectacular. Israel could not take any credit. God got all the glory. God didn't use them to fight the battle. He fought the battle. God didn't give them a creative plan. God fought for them. God didn't use one of them as the hero to save the day. God saved them all. God saved his people when they couldn't save themselves. And when the Israelites saw the great power of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him. They weren't criticizing Moses anymore. When they saw God's power at work, fear was changed to trust. On the other side of the Red Sea, while God destroyed the enemy, the Israelites did two things. They watched and they worshiped. God gave them the victory and they never had to fight. I have a word from God for you today. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for your word. God, I thank you for these stories of encouragement. God, you did it before and you can do it again. So God, we fight our battles on our knees. God, you give us the victory. We don't have to do anything because the battle is yours. So God, we put our faith and our trust in you. God, we surrender our circumstances to you and we'll sit back and watch you claim victory. In Jesus' name, amen. God has the victory. Put your faith and trust in him. And if nobody's told you today that you're loved, know that I, Pastor Joel, love you and you're loved here at Station Church. Let's sing this last song together.
Oh Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. You never fail, God. You've never failed us and you never will. Oh God, we put our faith and trust in you. We thank you, Jesus, that you cause us to triumph even when we don't know what you're doing. Oh, thank you, God. You've got it all under control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for coming to church today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. to be silent God is fighting for you now healing winds are blowing pouring out his glory on this house not only to bring contrast but to bridge the great divide hand in hand we walk on dry land and we dance on the other side do not fear, just be still and watch the Lord rescue you. Stand firm, He will deliver you. You need only to be silent. God is fighting for the glowing, pouring out his glory on this house, not only to bring contrast, but to bridge the great divide, hand in hand we walk on dry land, and we dance on the other side, do not fear, just be still and watch the Lord. to the Lord say no matter what you face I gain the glory I gain the glory so even through your trials and even through the pain
just be still and watch the Lord rescue.